I'll be honest, I really don't understand this ridiculous drive to make phones ever slimmer or even foldable. I'm sure we remember the Apple Bendgate where it was reported that sitting on the latest Apple device would result in them bending before everyone shortly realised that in fact every modern smartphone bends when you sit on it. Well, not this one. <sighs> this is the Eulophone Armour 10. Though certainly not as big a brand as Apple or Samsung, Eulophone has been around since 2010 and their rugged smartphones are up there with the best. The Eulophone Armour 10 is available now for around $400 to $500 depending on where you buy it. Now at that sort of price I expect it to be rugged, good performance, snappy interface and a good camera or five. So join me, James Bruce, with MakeUseOff.com reviews as I take a closer look at the Eulophone Armour 10 and whether it's the right mid-range rugged smartphone for you. Also, do keep watching to the end of this video to find out how you can win a Eulophone Armour 10 for yourself. It has 128 gigabytes of storage, which isn't amazing, but you can add a micro SD to expand that easy enough. Featuring a whopping great 6.7 inch display that runs at 2400 by 1080p pixels, a suitable glass screen protector is included in the package. Powering all of this is a MediaTek 800 Dimensity system on a chip, which consists of an MT6873 CPU, as well as a Mali G57 GPU. A healthy eight gigabytes of RAM rounds this all off. The only port you'll find on the device is this USB-C port hidden away with a rubber cover on the base. However, they do also provide a USB-C to headphone jack adapter in the box should you wish to use it. There is a fingerprint sensor on the back, though you can also set up face unlock, which is mostly what I've been using, and I found it to be pretty reliable in well-lit conditions. However, bear in mind that like all Android devices, the face unlock feature only uses image recognition. There's no 3D scanning as you'll find on iPhones. So it's of overall questionable security, and if ultra secure is something that you look for, you probably shouldn't use face unlock. On the sides, you'll also find volume up and down, as well as a power button and a multifunction configurable button on the other side. Built like a rubbery tank, it has an IP68K rating for water and dust ingress, as well as drop and shock protection. I'm pretty confident that you could take out any assailant in hand-to-hand -hand combat, armed just with the Eulophone Armour 10. Of course, at over half an inch thick and 12 ounces or 333 grams heavy, you're going to need some very large and well-stitched pockets to keep this in. However, this is mainly due to the whopping 5800 milliamp hour battery that you'll find inside of this that gives a solid two days of battery life at least and this is backed up by a 15 watt wireless charging capability. No less than five camera sensors are included, the main one being a 64 megapixel Samsung ISO cell bright GW1, backed up by wide angle, macro lens, depth sensor, as well as an HD front camera. Last but certainly not least, it's 5G capable. Now, just to be clear, I can't test the 5G capabilities because I live in an area of the country where Frankly, 4G would be a luxury. While I don't doubt the 5G capabilities, it varies significantly by your location and your provider. So that's something you're gonna to have to look up locally. All right, let's move on to UI and performance testing. Running a stock version of Android 10, I found the general user interface to be really snappy, but that alone certainly doesn't need a particularly beefy CPU nowadays. Since Antutu was removed from the Play Store last year, I've switched to using 3D Mark Wildlife for the 3D testing, and I ran this simultaneously on the Armour 10, an iPhone 10, and the Sony Xperia XE2. Results were mediocre at best, with the frame rate a little better than the two-year-old Sony, but both of them were eclipsed by the iPhone 10. I also tried to run Geekbench 5, however, that just refused to complete and would crash at the end of every test. So instead, I turned to Performance Test Mobile, which you can see the results of on screen now. In terms of raw performance then, overall I'd rank it as mid-range, perhaps somewhere between an S9 and an S10. However, it is better than those phones, of course, in every other aspect. Just in terms of raw performance, it's pretty mediocre. Moreover, this kind of performance testing and comparison of numbers should really be taken with a grain of salt because ultimately, unless you're trying to edit and render a 4K video on your phone, it doesn't really matter. For mobile gaming, at least, I did try some Call of Duty Mobile and that seemed to run pretty well. Remember that most mobile games will be designed to run on most 
handsets, not just the latest and greatest. So unless your performance is right at the bottom of the pack, which this certainly isn't, uh, then you're going to have no problems with gaming. The best praise I can give for the performance of the Armour 10 is that I took the SIM card out of my iPhone 10 uh, a week or so ago, swapped it into here, and really haven't felt the need to look back and use this since. This phone does everything I need it to, and it's snappy enough. Okay, on to media viewing. So although the screen in this is absolutely massive at around 6.7 inches, it's a 20 to 9 ratio super wide screen. Now for movies, this is actually closer to the 21 9 ratio that you would expect from a cinematic release. However, for things like YouTube, which are shot in 16.9, it means that when watching full screen, you're going to have about a centimetre or so of black bars on either side. Now, you can scale the video up uh, pretty easily, but of course that will cut some off the top and the bottom. So a more realistic measure of screen size perhaps is 5.5 inches, which is the maximum diagonal that you're going to get when watching typical 1080p HD YouTube content. So while the screen itself is best suited to cinematic releases, uh, realistically I don't think you're going to be watching a lot of movies on here. And that's mainly due to the fact that the speaker is quite poor. It's a single, very tinny, mono speaker that you'll find on the rear of the device. It does get loud, but it just doesn't sound that good. And that's the first thing I noticed when even trying to watch something on YouTube, especially since I tend to put my phone down on a table, uh, which then of course muffles the speaker even more because it's on the back of the phone. Now this is in contrast to the iPhone and a lot of other modern smartphones, which will have dual stereo speakers on the front of the device and are really better designed for watching media. Again, this isn't a gaming phone, nor is it a phone specifically for watching media. Okay, so how about those cameras? One of the standout features of the Armour 10 is that it includes five different camera sensors. The best of which is the 64 megapixel primary camera. It then has a 2 megapixel depth sensor, a wide angle lens with an 8 megapixel sensor, and a proper macro lens with a 5 megapixel sensor. For me, this is really impressive, and while it's certainly not unique to the latest generations of smartphones, if you're coming from something that's a couple of years old even, uh, having this many lenses available to you is certainly going to be something you appreciate. If you're buying a rugged phone, it is presumably for outdoors use, and therefore I would assume that you're going to be pretty into your photography. So let's take a closer look at some samples of images and videos that I shot with this thing about you is, I know if I fell on the ground, you wouldn't hesitate to eat me, would you? You really wouldn't. I bet you'd, you'd have me up for dinner, wouldn't you? <laughs> Switching to standard photo mode allows you to toggle between normal field of view and the wide angle shot. Wide angle, of course, being more useful when you want to capture more of the scene. So landscapes, city shots, or making your room look bigger than they really are when selling your house. Then there's true macro photography, which on smartphones in the past has been difficult. And by true macro photography, I don't just mean zooming your main camera in a lot, or those tacky clip-on lenses that produce horrendous results. I mean an actual lens that can be focused as close as a few centimeters away. In fact, the macro mode of the Eulophone Armour 10 requires you to place the lens around three centimeters from the subject you're shooting. Anything further than that will just be blurry, and you should use the normal camera instead. As with any macro photography, you'll need some good light, but with the right conditions, I was able to take some pretty cool shots, I thought. For me, the macro lens alone is a good reason to just replace my older iPhone with this, particularly for outdoors trips where nature often presents some interesting smaller subjects, as well as uh, Lego. In terms of video quality, again, in good light, the 4K 30fps video looks pretty good. You can see it here in a side-by-side -side comparison with the iPhone 10. Okay, now I want to talk about ruggedness and repairability. Now, I really do not like destroying phones, so I didn't do anything silly to this, like try and drive over it. However, the fact that it's rugged means that it will put up a lot more with harsh treatment than your average smartphone. I gave it a good squish around the mud, I tried to ruin it with sand and soil, 
Then it needed a good wash off, so I left it in the river. It took all of that just fine, as well as the odd drop and throw around the garden. But again, anything obviously too drastic is going to destroy it. Just don't be afraid to drop it. Now iFixit doesn't have a repairability rating for the Uniphone Armor 10. However, like most modern smartphones, there's very little that you would be able to repair yourself. In fact, being a rugged phone, even more so because the seals would be broken once you tried to open it up and repair it. I couldn't find any replacement batteries for it uh, either. However, you might expect some more of those over time. But again, opening it up and trying to replace the battery yourself will almost certainly uh, ruin some of that IP rating. So it won't be, for instance, waterproof anymore. If you're looking for something that'll be future-proofed and repairable by a large number of uh, third-party services, this probably isn't it. That said, the fact that it can withstand more abuse and has a much larger battery inside of it means that, generally speaking, the lifespan of this device is going to be longer than your other average smartphone. Finally, let's talk battery life. While the 5,800 milliamp hour battery does give a well above average uh, life compared to a normal smartphone, let's remember that that's also powering a fairly large 6.7 inch screen and therefore set your expectations appropriately. In normal daily use, by which I mean chatting on Slack, watching YouTube videos, uh, browsing Reddit for a couple of hours, morning and night, it, I managed to get around two days of full usage from the device. Now, if you're taking it out on a hike and perhaps looking at it less than you might, uh, as a tech reviewer, then you're probably gonna get an even better battery life from it. Three or four days would not be unexpected. So, should you buy the Ulephone Armor 10? As I said, it's been my primary daily phone now for over a week, and there are three things which I really appreciate about the device. First is the massive battery, because I don't always remember to charge, and it's nice to wake up and know that actually your phone isn't dead and you can get to using it straight away. Second, that massive screen. 6.7 inches is really nice for doing everything. Thirdly, just the ruggedness. I'm not the most careful of people. I do work in the garden a lot, looking after animals, and having a phone that I can drop in the mess, in the water, in the chicken poop, and not worry about it breaking, uh, is a lovely peace of mind. Ultimately, the Armor 10 is a very solid device. Mediocre performance, perhaps, but big screen, bigger battery life, better than expected imaging, and 5G capabilities. That said, the 5G capability does add a good chunk to the price. So if you're living somewhere where it's unlikely you'll get 5G anytime soon, then it's probably uh, not worth getting the Ulephone Armor 10. They do have some similarly specced phones without the 5G capability, uh, and you'll save a fair chunk on the price. Still, if you can use 5G, and if you just want something rugged to survive whatever 2021 is going to throw at us, and if you fancy the idea of having an absurd amount of lenses for wide angle and true macro photography, especially if you're taking it outside, then I can thoroughly recommend the Ulephone Armor 10. All right, thanks for watching, and thanks to Ulephone for sponsoring another Armor 10 to give away to one lucky viewer. To enter the competition, just head on over to the link in the description or go directly to makeusoft.com slash giveaways, where you'll find all of our currently running uh, giveaways that are open to enter. At the end of the review article, you'll find a competition widget. Pop your details in there. And remember to add competitions at makeuseof.com to your address book. So when I send you an email saying you've won the competition, it won't go into your spam folder. Thanks for watching. Good luck. And if you found this video helpful, please do remember to hit like. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. And consider subscribing for more daily news, tech reviews, gadget giveaways, and more from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Until next time. <laughs>